this could, it could all go horribly wrong at any minute. Hello there, and welcome to the 171st edition of Lewis Black's Redcast, entitled Live from Iowa City. Uh, I could call it Pecker for the Prosecution, uh, but that's the joke. It's done. And uh, and what's important, really, is, is that the series of rants, we were able to do them live out of Iowa City. It was uh, fun as hell to do. I'm enjoying being able to do at least one of those a week and reading a few uh, rants that are coming in at the other shows that are coming in from the city I'm performing in. Uh, and I hope to be able to do that a bit more as uh, things wind down. Uh, it's just tough to do but do them back to back to back. It's uh, it makes for a heck of a. It's two shows a night, and it's and and both require certain uh, different energies. And uh, <clears throat> and really, uh, I'm doing uh, 80 minutes as it is, 70 to 80 to just do my show. Now I'm cutting that back, and I think it's important for me to kind of get that all squared away, as I'd like to do at least, hopefully, <laughs> one last. One last um, special, and uh, but um, I think that it is. Uh, it went really well in Iowa City. I, there was some really great stuff written in, um, and I will point out that uh, I'm hoping to do it uh, this week in Richmond. So if you're living in Richmond, if you're in Richmond, Virginia, please uh, send in your rants. If you're in Washington D.C., send them in around the area. If you're around the area of uh, Wilmington, Delaware. I'll be there. Three uh, three shows I'm really looking forward to, and the ones last week were just great. Iowa City went well, uh, and it was great to be there again finally, and uh, home of Caitlin Clark, and they're still weeping <laughs> that she won't be coming back next year. And then it was on to uh, Minnesota at an incredible night at the uh, uh, Mystic Lake Casino, even though I didn't when any money I was able to help pay, I think, for uh, them to be able to maybe have a third tower. Maybe they'll name this one after me. But that that audience was spectacular, and so was the one at the Turbo uh, University in um, La Crosse, Wisconsin, which I've never I've, I've played everywhere in Wisconsin, and it was a pleasure to, to finally play La Crosse at this absolutely stunning theater. Uh, and... Um, You'll be, I think I even give it a little plug when I'm doing, reading some of the rants that I read there. Uh, we've had some great ones come in this week uh, that I'm also uh, throwing into the, our pile of rants to be done. And um, I look forward to hearing from all of you uh, as the summer rolls on. Then I'm heading to Europe and uh, I'm hoping that the folks in Amsterdam, I hope Belgium, I hope uh, Brussels, I mean, at least uh, it's in Belgium, Louis. Uh, 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 the uh, in London and in uh, Stockholm and Berlin uh, that uh, if folks there have something they want to bitch about, please get it to me and I will get it and read it. I already have one from Amsterdam uh, about trash, which is really uh, piling up there for because it is inundated. Um, and uh, so if you have uh, those uh, those rants, folks, get them to me and I will try to read them at my performances there. But, but the uh, thing is, is while I'm over there, uh, I'm not I'm going to be doing uh, very short intros, just so you know. And I can guarantee you, uh, unless something extraordinary happens, I'm, I'm not, you're not, I'm not going to be missing anything except some sort of a twist or a little variation on all the themes we're fucking living through. And hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully we can get through a section of time where there are no tornadoes or blistering heat or flooding or whatever the fuck else. Locusts, for for God's sake. And uh, uh, I just wanted to make a quick comment about the the one thing uh, I know about is this car, the White House Correspondents' Dinner. I don't know about that specifically. I did the Congressional Correspondents' Dinner. I've lived around Washington, D.C. for the most of my formative years. I've performed downtown there a ton. And I will tell you, in terms of those, the correspondence dinner, both the Washington uh, one, uh, the congressional one, I mean, uh, the one for the president's, ludicrous for a comic to be there. Ludicrous. Okay? Both took place, I believe, I, I spoke at the same place. The, uh, the, 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 probably may, they may have uh, 
changed the the room or did some rebuilding, but I uh, I worked that room uh, the, the the Washington Hilton. Uh, it's a massive amount of people. Uh, they they really do not give a shit about comedy, and they are judgmental. And the room is a fucking banquet room. It is not a performance space. So for anybody to comment what it's like to be a a comic standing working in a uh, in basically a um, in a in essentially a ballroom, essentially a uh, banquet space, essentially not a theater, uh, which has got you know the the sound, the acoustics, the sense of of uh, being able to con- deal with the room in terms of sound uh, is it, 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 nigh on fuck impossible. It's 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 the dread in part of doing um, uh, you know uh, corporate events because that's the rooms you're appearing in, and it's they're awful. They're awful for comedy. They were not built for comedy. They're not even built. They're barely built to to fucking be to be spoke to be spoken to in to speak in to eat in. Okay, it's so ridiculous. The, the people who are commenting too on this is the Times at least sent a comedy critic. Okay, but the rest of them, sent, you know, somebody who's just there going, well, you know, he didn't call and didn't do. What do you mean, Colin didn't do? What do you know? about comedy and what it's like to do, to work under that kind of pressure. Because you got that, the room, and then you got that fucking audience, that judgmental, like, uh, Nuremberg audience. You know, what do you mean you're referring to? No, but it's really a highly judgmental group of people who believe that their sense of humor about politics is way, way more uh, accurate so, you know, they get it. They're keen. They understand it. Boy, you know, what you're not going to put anything over on them. They're going to let you know that they're not going to, they're not going to sit there like this. And uh, so um, my, my uh, heart reaches out every time I know that someone has to do it. Uh, once I did it, I turned to John afterwards, Stuart, and I said, what'd you think? And he said, never again. You know, it's intolerable. It's impossible. And it's, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, I've never talked to Roy about it, but uh, he probably, he may have had more fun than I did. It was miserable. I got some, I got a good few bits out of it once, once the pain had passed and my, and it was great to have my parents there. Uh, But whoo, what a night. And, uh, and I'm wearing this uh, Reed Band Books uh, T-shirt in honor of the Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library, where we're supporting uh, the work of Kurt Vonnegut uh, and uh, his exceptional uh, writing and the you know the whole idea of being kind and being nice and uh, and also that his um, uh, Slaughterhouse Five uh, is being banned around the country. So read banned books. Okay, they're not going to hurt. Chances are, it's something you should read. Certainly, that's a book you should read if you've not. One of the great anti-war books, by far, one of the certainly one of the top hundred books written in the 20th century by an American. And we are doing the Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library. Go the go to the go to that. Go to Google and KVM. It's either Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library dot org kbml.org. On Sunday, May 5th, we're doing a fundraiser from five to seven. You can go to the, go to that, go to the website. Uh, two co-hosts, uh, Barry Lynn, free speech activist, and uh, Dwight Simmons, a very, very funny comedian who's been working with us. And, uh, and I'll even be there kind of waving, and <laughs> maybe do a little talking. I'm not going to be performing. Okay. Um, because I have a very long weekend of shows, but uh, I do hope you can come out. It should be a great evening, and uh, it will help an extraordinary cause. So uh, it's it's an important one. We shouldn't be banning books. No, we shouldn't, uh, idiots. But uh, we will move on and hopefully move forward. And uh, hopefully the uh, Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library is part of the spearhead of that, okay? Because uh, there's no argument here. You don't ban books. There's no discussion. Not up for discussion. We can have free speech all we want, but this is bullshit. You don't ban a book. Also, you will be seeing 
who will be speaking at the Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library benefit by going to vonnegutlibrary.org. That's vonnegutlibrary.org. And uh, I am the, lucky enough to be the chairman of the board of that outfit, and it gives me a little prestige. <laughs> and I'm, with with what my dwindling prestige, that's one, one piece that I'm holding on to. Uh, also, on uh, May 7th, uh, I will be doing a virtual graduation. Uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Both of that is to a, a fundraiser, but also the opportunity for me to read the names of those graduates uh, from schools around the country. Uh, if you wish, go there, too, to the Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library uh, website and see, uh, see what's going on and uh, when and how to find us that night. It'll be done as a Zoom or uh, whatever, a Google. I don't know. Uh, but I do know I'll be there, and I do know that I'll be reading these uh, names. And I've done it for the past few years, and I, I truly enjoy it. And uh, for some reason, <laughs> at least the parents, I don't know what the kids think, but at least the parents enjoy me uh, reading these names. And I've enjoyed uh, this whole past week. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this week, and I'm looking forward to Europe. I, it has been a, a real pleasure to be uh be doing these shows. Uh, it, the response of the audience has been incredible. Um, and uh, from time to time, I get some negativity, but uh, that's, that's the way it goes. And, uh, but overwhelmingly, it's been an extraordinary uh, experience for me. And I wish it makes you, it, it demands that, it, 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 I wish that I had um, kind of been more present uh, af after the shows in the sense of when uh, when the audience and I were there together in, uh, um, and once the show was finished that I had really uh, taken it in. I am now. It means the world to me, as to all of you. And um, for all of you who continue to write your rants, thank you. Uh, they get better and better. Uh, there are a few this week that are dazzling, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next week. Next week, live at, uh, hopefully, live from Richmond. And hopefully, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe bonerific for the defense. Who knows? That's a stupid joke, and I maybe we'll cut it. <laughs> Thank you again, and it is a privilege and a pleasure to spend time with you. Take care of each other, okay? Because it's just going to get crazier. Um, Thank you. We're, uh, we're coming to you live tonight from Iowa City, the Angler Theater. <laughs> Iowa City is, uh, if you don't know it, is the uh, home of the University of Iowa. And, um, and the home of Caitlin Clark. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful little town. We're where they th really spend a lot of time thinking too much. <laughs> every moment, uh, they, they break down every moment into its component parts and then decide which part of that moment is truly the best part. It's, and to perform for them is wonderful because many of them actually were doing pretend blowing bubbles tonight. And, <laughs> No, it's, it, it's been a pleasure being here, and uh, I look forward to reading the... Uh, I'll start with this. There is... Uh, uh, there's a certain amount of... Uh, I'll just read. There's... It's really good because I asked folks to write in stuff, and they did. And there's a there's a kind of a critical, certain amount of critique going on of your town. And this this comes from Yale. I uh, Yale, and uh, his he said uh, for a long time now the state of Iowa has been suffering from what's known as a brain drain. What does this mean in layman's terms? It means that pretty much anybody with 12 operating brain cells and 25 bucks for a bus ticket gets the fuck out of the state of Iowa <laughs> as soon as they're goddamn able to. 
Usually, is this is as soon as they graduate college or whenever their probation ends. <laughs> Whichever comes first. And I can't really blame them for leaving either. No, not if they grew up here in a state where they'll throw your ass in jail for smoking a joint. And if your 14-year-old daughter gets knocked up, it might be impossible for her to get an abortion so she could stay in school and finish the eighth grade. But it would be perfectly legal for her to get a job working an overnight shift at a slaughterhouse, <laughs> scrubbing pig brains off the wall. So at least she'll be able to afford formula once the baby arrives, which would really be hard for her to do on her allowance alone, right? You can't really blame her for getting pregnant, though, not after they've pulled damn near every book that even mentions teen pregnancy <laughs> out of our public school libraries. Except for the Bible, of course. That book is still on the shelves. The Virgin Mary herself was only about 13 or 14 when she got knocked up. And by a much older guy. <laughs> who also split town afterwards. And that all turned out great for everybody, right? Why would the kids need to read anything else about the subject? So as a result of this brain drain everywhere else in the state, because the University of Iowa is here and it draws in a lot of young people or people who don't have the 25 bucks for a bus ticket to Chicago or Minneapolis, Iowa City is the most politically active and social conscious conscience town in the whole fucking state. Well, and I can vouch for that tonight. <laughs> no, 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 Iowa, uh, not because our local elected officials are particularly competent or interesting or helpful. No, Iowa City is a very political town because most of the people who live here are constitutionally fucking incapable of not sharing their political thoughts and leanings <laughs> with you as often as they possibly can in nearly every goddamn interaction you have with them. <laughs> As God is my witness, I know people who bought bigger cars just because they ran out of room for the bumper stickers on their old ones. <laughs> and needed a bigger, bigger canvas to tell the strangers stuck in line behind them in the Burger King drive through what they thought about everything. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the forests of yard signs I see everywhere. Signs railing against this or demanding that or warning me about some other damn thing. They're so fucking ubiquitous that it's gotten to the point where I can't walk down the street without feeling like I just spent 12 hours chained to a radiator in the basement of NPR headquarters <laughs> getting flogged by Terry Gross and being forced to hand transcribe that day's episode of Fresh Air <laughs> while listening to a group of Inuit throat singers <laughs> Rehearsing a gender swap production of Hello Dolly in the room across the hall. <laughs> God damn, that's a great sentence. <laughs> it's really just so goddamn exhausting having to know what everybody I know thinks or feels about every last motherfucking thing in creation. And I like everybody I know a lot more before I did. <laughs> And yes, I realize that, this, that a lot of this is just the latest version of the same kind of lazy public virtue signaling that's been around since those awareness-raising lapel ribbons first became a thing 30 years ago and people started walking around with so many different colors of polyester ribbon pinned to their chest that they look like five-star admirals in the village people. <laughs> But a lot of these people actually let this kind of thinking impact ordinary decisions they make in their day-to-day -day lives. Hey, I'm hungry. Want to check out that new burger place that just opened? I don't know. What's their uh, official corporate position on orangutan sex trafficking? <laughs> well, I feel like that's the sort of thing that most folks are probably against, but I can Google it. <laughs> These are the kind of conversations you have to have with people to get to a lunch in this town. I was at a friend's house a few weeks ago and she was making us some coffee and I saw a box of coffee filters on her counter. The brand name of the filters was, If You Care. 
which really made me feel bad for two reasons. Not only could I have been caring more by buying these coffee filters, but for at least 30 years, my favorite brand of coffee filters has been Fuck the Pandas. Thank you, Yale. I, I only read half of it. He really, whoo. This is uh, from Fuck You, Kim. Uh, <laughs> I teach in the southwest region of the great Hawkeye State. Our idiot governor, the Kim Reaper, <laughs> recently signed legislation to allow teachers to carry firearms inside of public schools. Good for you! Good, good for you! Son of a bitch! They just did it in Tennessee, so you must have been, fuck, we can do it too. <laughs> of all the, uh, my colleagues at the school, I can trust exactly none of them to carry a firearm. <laughs> Myself at the top of that list. Hell, I'm still in trouble for playing hallway hockey during a staff mental health day. <laughs> hey, Kim, maybe you should consider increasing expenditures for schools to hire mental health professionals, and crisis interventionists. Holy shit, maybe the AEAs did have a purpose, as opposed to telling teachers who already have enough shit to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that they might be employed to shoot someone. I don't give a fuck if they're increasing the pay for teachers in the state. Frankly, it took too long to get that legislation passed. I think I speak on behalf of a large contingent of teachers when I say to Kim Reynolds, eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> this is uh, from Todd. <laughs> As I watched and listened to you over the years, I learned a very important lesson. It's okay to be mad. There are things that happen in this life that cause you to triple blink to make sure that what you witnessed was real. With that in mind, I'd like to list off a few Iowa things that I feel we should be absolutely enraged over, but we seem to be currently taking with a smile. Well, certainly not laughter. Um, <laughs> Due to a shortage of doctors, Iowa and many other Midwest states have opted to expand the role of nurses. We claim to have the best care in the world while charging the most in the world for that care. No way this could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Iowa is steadily moving forward with arming their teachers. I know that I would likely not be alive to type this rant had a few of my teachers been armed <laughs> when I was in school. Iowa continues to take more money away from public schools so they can fund private school voucher programs. As someone that is still paying student loans, I find it very promising to see that we may be moving that problem to an earlier point in people's lives. <laughs> Governor Kim Reynolds either missed the deadline to renew or decided to reject federal child care funding. Neat! How do you miss that? What the fuck? It's free money, you fucking asshole. That isn't difficult. Son of a bitch. How do you reject that? In the name of fucking what? Huh? I mean, seriously. That's where you gotta go. No. And you gotta go to the place, and you don't hurt them. You just say, we have to have a chat. I'm gonna show you a child, and you're gonna try to remember, this is a child. Well, we have funding to most e everything in Iowa, our overlords just voted to give themselves a cost of living increase. You heard that right. Cut public funding, arm the teachers, and give statewide raises to every single elected official and legislature. This includes Ms. Reynolds. You know, the one that couldn't be bothered to sign a paper to renew child care programs that already existed. <laughs> wow. What? Do you want her in your state? Do I want her? I got a fucking moron in my state. <laughs> the governor, uh, the, the uh, mayor of New York, uh, I'll trade you straight up. Okay? 
You just, what kind of stupid do you want? <laughs> Listen, my guy said, I, I, I really appreciate this, Todd. Thank you. Um, my guy said that, uh, he said, he, I've never heard this out of any fucking pot. I don't get enough credit. <laughs> That's... That's, uh, that's when the word it rings through your head and the word is douchebag. <laughs> this is uh, from Frank Ninivaji. Why haven't you been given your one week to host The Daily Show? I'm livid about this. <laughs> That's my alter ego. <laughs> they keep saying I'm gonna get a week, we'll see when. <laughs> I don't trust them. <laughs> but they constantly, you know, but my agent calls, no, no, we, we've got him, we got a week for him. Uh, when, uh, we'll, we'll let you know. <laughs> um, but I'm on May 8th, uh, so uh, keep an eye out. Louis Ariola, thank you for this. I just want to know what the fuck is going on with the SCOTUS justices. Are they now the damn rulers of the English language where every fucking word in the Constitution has to be questioned by those assholes? It turns out that they don't know what otherwise intent impede mean. Are you fucking kidding me? Now they question the meaning of every fucking word in the Constitution and legal statutes. Do they come from fucking Timbuktu that they can't read English and apply the law? Did they graduate from a driving fucking school? Excuse my French, but I'm so fucking mad that my mouth is fo foaming. I think it's rabies. <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm reading this back to back. You'll see why Lone Star Hawkeye. Men have failed. It is time, way past time, for women to run fucking everything. <laughs> Not Kim, though, huh? Yeah. It's every so often it backfires. If Sam Alito or Clarence Thomas come into my medical office, they are getting a three-fingered prostate exam. No lube. I love that one. Lone Star Hawkeye. Judith Rapier, I'm now 73. Nothing about me is really different. This isn't how my daughters feel. They seem to think my brain isn't as sharp as it could be and that physically, I'm nearly an invalid. I live alone and I love gardening. One daughter said I need an electric lawnmower because it will be easier to start. The other daughter said I should never get on a ladder. Well, that would be fine if when I called them, they would come over and help. <laughs> One lives nine hours away. The other still has a young daughter and works full time. So our roles have reversed. So what do I do? I sneak up the ladder to clean the gutters. I pull that cord on the lawnmower, sharpen its blades, and maintain the engine. Shh, don't tell my kids. <laughs> Today I trimmed all the bushes and trimmed the trees in the yard. I love my girls, but I feel I'm sneaking around like they did in high school. <laughs> so if they want a reverse roll, so be it. What can they do if they find out? Ground me? <laughs> I live alone. I do wonder if the oldest will come by and take the ladder and lawnmower away from me. <laughs> and all my tools. Well, I have a surprise for them. I put a lock on my shed <laughs> and the gates that lead to the back door. Thanks, Lewis, for listening. I'm in seventh heaven in my garden. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this. This is, uh, this is just a great one. This is a woman who had to get something off her chest and did it. If you want, uh, uh, continue to send in your rants, folks, those of you who are watching. Um, and uh, I'll be in D.C. next week, and um, I will be uh, in Richmond and in Delaware, in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, you can go to 
Lewis Black uh, Live and uh, or LewisBlack.com, and they'll tell you how to how to do it. And uh, uh, I leave you with this. This is from Lisa Donat, or I hope that pronounced that right, or Donat. No, Donat. Well, but fucking Lewis. <laughs> Never. It's. My ex thinks it's okay to be with a woman that's 20 years older than him and that's on welfare and calls my kids names like dummy, idiot, and even dumb fuck on one occasion. Why are people like this? Who the fuck talks to a child like that? He tolerates someone talking to his kids like that all so he can have a warm place to put his dick and get some toothless blowjobs. <laughs> dumb grandmother fucker. <laughs> I feel better now. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for watching, guys. I just want to thank you all for coming out this evening and being a splendid audience and uh, not taking, uh, you know, my bullshit seriously. <laughs> and uh, it has always been a pleasure to uh, come through Iowa. Uh, I've always enjoyed it. From the first time I think I appeared was in Des Moines at a comedy club there. Um, and, uh, and then you were considered, and I don't know if it's still true, but it was always impressive to me uh, that you were the most literate State in the Union. And, um, I, I don't know if that's true now because I know during the pandemic, <laughs> I know that a lot of people came here and uh, I think it fucked up the curve. <laughs> but you keep fighting the good fight and uh, I'll see you down the road. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me, Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly.